Welcome back to Pro City Education. This is Zeth. Today I'm going to be giving an update on GEVL. You're going to find my previous DD in the description below. If you would like to watch it after this one here, it's also well done. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow. Subscribe and leave your notifications on. I'm going to go through technical analysis, news, and what I think about the stock. And at any point, if you feel you're missing out on the technical analysis, you'll find in the description below an explanation to each of the indicators in a playlist and what they mean. Let's jump right into it. On the MACD here, you get to see that the MACD is going a little bit towards the negative side. It is testing some time or some uh, reversal, probably sometime next week, although that is not confirmed yet. So we're still yet to see how it's going to play. On the William percent R, we get to see that stock is actually oversold, and that is bullish. On the ADX, it supports in around 3902, which suggests that there is a strong trend here. When it comes into momentum, the stock momentum is still high enough to create some kind of positive action. Moving on towards moving averages up here, you get to see that the stock price is still below the 200 SMA, which is bearish, but very close enough that you can disregard that. Stock price 10 SMA is above 30 MA, that is bullish. It's in the trading action zone where positive reversals are likely in this case. It's above the 50 SMA and so it looks overall bullish. Moving on towards the one hour perspective, what we get to see here, I'm zooming in quickly, is that the MACD is curving up and you might get to see a green pre-market, possibly a green day tomorrow. On the William percent R, the stock is overbought. On the ADX, it's trading a little bit more sloppy and momentum is a little bit rough here. On the moving averages, nothing significant on the one hour scale, but it does look somewhat mixed, both bullish and bearish. Significant supports and resistances are going to be followed by Fibonacci retracements. We're going to do Fibonacci retracements quickly. Fibonacci retracements, we get to see a support at 104 and a resistance at 139. Significant supports and resistances, and I'm going to draw a price line here to help you all. And we get to see a significant one at 117. And then above that, a resistance at 124. Let's look as well to more resistance, oh, sorry, supports. 113. 96 94 and 82 significant resistances here is the 130 mark 138 and then the 150 when it comes into compliance we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this company should be in compliance for their minimum bid and that is amazing news, so the PR should be here anytime soon. Now, in terms of patterns and whatnot, let's try to look into the one hour's perspective to try to determine if we see any clear pattern. Now, right off the bat, there's no clear patterns that we get to see. It's holding really nicely, although looking at this one on level 2, you get to see massive walls that are always created between 120 and 130. Moving on towards news now and how I think this company will play. No recent news other than the 400 million and I did cover that news as well in my previous DD so make sure to watch that one there. Institutional values, nothing new. Insiders as well was nothing new. Something significant though is the next catalyst coming. And it's on Monday, September 14th at 10am, 10.30am my bad. As well as Tuesday, September 15th from 10.30 to 12.45. And you get to see Tim from Jivo the chief commercial officer and vice president will be attending there. So this conference is the industry uh, sustainable fuels sector. So that does look amazing. So how is this stock going to be playing? Now, there is a lot of news about university, for instance, Texas leading in biofuel research. And there's a lot of different news about the biofuel that I did cover in the previous stock, in the previous DD. You will find here that the stock is sitting between around a 110 or sorry one uh one dollar and 160 i definitely think that it's actually a really nice hold for longer now whether you sell probably closer to second week of september now the compliance news is probably going to hit tomorrow morning it did kind of dip a little and i did mention probably sell somewhere around one in the morning off the compliance day and then once it drops down so you, that looks like a significant dip not on this scale because we do have quite a bit of a movement so this is the kind of dip that kind of caused if it does still hold above the 117 mark the 115 mark i'll definitely consider holding 
uh, consider putting in a stop limit somewhere below there as well. Now, what do you think about the sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and you have a wonderful day.